It is true that uh, everybody needs a home to the point that it is impossible to exaggerate the importance of home. What is the plight of millions of refugees everywhere in the world is that they do not have anymore a permanent home. Even for us, when things fail, when we feel tired and alone, or when we cannot solve the problem that we face, the fact that we have a home to go to, a place to rest, already comfort ourselves. Let us go home. I want to go home. How many times and in how many circumstances have we heard people saying these words or have said them ourselves? Home is where we are safe. Home is a place of communion. If we know that we are going home, the trip is never too long or too difficult. But to have a home is not just to have a house. It is to have a set of close ties, close relationship with people who accept us for what we are and who give us a sense of belonging. Each one of us, as a family member, has this particular and physical home. <coughs> but as believer, the church, or more precisely, the Christian community, is our spiritual home. As believer, we need that spiritual home built on the foundation of Christ as the cornerstone, as St. Paul says in the second reading. Here we have <coughs> brother and sister who accompany us in our faith journey helping and supporting each other. St. Peter says in the second reading, like living stone, let yourself be built into a spiritual house. So we can understand why during the few months we are not allowed to gather <coughs> because of the danger of the coronavirus, why so many among us deeply felt missing something, missing that spiritual home which is found in the gathering of the Christian community. And we see in the first reading of today, how this spiritual home, in order to be kept alive and to remain lively, needs the participation and the collaboration of everybody, <coughs> and especially the commissioning of different ministers in the service of the community priests, deacon, EM, readers, altar server, member of the choir, and so and so. But in spite of all these particular home that we have, physical or spiritual, and that we cherish so much, we know that it is not only on earth that we have a home. 
then we have to acknowledge that here on earth we do not have, in fact, a lasting home. All that we have, as St. Paul says, is a kind of tent. And at the hour of our death, that tent will be folded up. So, when death brings down the curtain on the day of our life, we need another home to go. Without such a home, life will be a journey to nowhere. We know that this lasting home is not on earth, but with God for the eternal life. So to die is to go to God. And to go to God is to go home, to our lasting home. During the Last Supper, when Jesus told his disciple that he was leaving them, they were deeply distressed. But he consoled them with these words, which are among the loveliest words in the gospel. There are many rooms in my father's house. I am going to prepare a place for you. I shall return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be also. These words mean that we have an eternal home to go to where all our hopes will be fulfilled. But there remains the question of how to get there. Let us take a concrete example. When we are in a city that we do not know well and ask for direction, a person may be answering us, go straight down until you come to a set of traffic light. Then turn right, then continue until the next traffic light, then after that you will turn left. So sometimes those instructions are so complicated that we cannot remember them. But we may be fortunate enough to meet an exceptionally kind person who will say to us, look, it is a little bit difficult to explain to you. Follow me. I will show you the way. It is true that the way to God, the way to our lasting home, has made many people confused and puzzled, and have made others really afraid because they do not know exactly. When Philip asked Jesus, show us the Father, or when Thomas said, Master, we do not know where you are going, how can we know the way? Jesus did not give them a lot of complicated direction or explanation. Instead, he said to them, I am the way. What he was saying, in fact, was, follow me. I will show you the way. Brother and sister, to have faith in God, to have faith in his son as Jesus asked his disciple to do without fear in today's gospel is to believe and to be sure that we have a lasting home to go to and to know the way to go there. If 
we have in our heart this conviction. The word of Jesus in today's gospel will fit well for us. Even in the difficult time we are experiencing now in Hong Kong because of the disease, do not let your heart be troubled. Amen.